My name is Steve Crushell. I live approximately 30 miles north of Haines, Alaska uh, at the Crushell Wildlife Center. I am a naturalist, I guess, if you wanted to define what I do. I've been working with wild animals my whole life, since I was back in the early as I can remember. I lived on a, on a big, beautiful farm in northern Minnesota with my grandparents and my mom and dad, I mean aunts and uncles, it was like the Waltons there. And my parents would bring in orphan animals from Alaska and northern Canada. So I always was around wild animals right from the very beginning. I don't know what normal life is like <laughs> without uh, you know, a wild animal following me or on me or I'm chasing it. The animals that I work with here are part of our family. They have names and they all need attention. Just like a little child, they, they show their emotions to me. They give me their uh, true selves all the time. And this is a team effort. This place is, uh, it all works because everybody knows just uh, intuitively what role they need to play to help. And we're all trying to help each other. And somehow, some way, it's always worked. Rocky is, Rocky is omnipresent. He's everywhere, and I couldn't run this without Rocky. Heck, he helped me build this cabin. He helped me build the fences. He also has a wonderful relationship with the grizzly bear, and the reindeer, and the moose. And uh, he has a very uh, soft approach. He's, he's, uh, he doesn't come across in a formidable way to these animals, and they love it. I accidentally ran into Rocky when I first moved here so long ago. And he was, I guess you could say he was sort of homeless. And you have to have some food. I'm gonna make you a banana and peanut butter uh, dessert. Just just sit down for a second. And the food he was eating, he was eating beans out of a can every time I saw him. So I thought, oh, hey, uh, Rocky, do you want a place to sleep? Do you want some decent food? And since that time, everything just changed for both of us. Garrett, my son, uh, he has a, a, an amazing rapport with some of these animals here. He has my back always when I'm doing something and I forget, he's there to help. He loves to uh, prepare the food here, he makes meals, he makes me flapjacks in the morning, he has a garden here. He does a lot of things that I sometimes overlook. What keeps me up at night is what kind of a future he has. If society as a whole continues on this path of self-destruction in my opinion. It's not sustainable how we're living. There's only so many people that are going to be interested in looking at a grizzly bear or a wolverine or some other wild animal and, and be in a log cabin, right? So because I'm a, I'm a naturalist and I'm a filmmaker too, I'm trying to always think of ways in which we can connect uh, other people that live in a different type of lifestyle to realize that we all are part of nature. How do you do that? Well, I make films about health and ways to treat chronic disease and cancer even. Um, I, I take those subjects and I live it myself. So I make juice every day out of organic vegetables, carrots, apples, and juice them and I drink that. And then I also run around barefoot a lot of the time here because I'm connected to the earth and there's an earth energy that really heals chronic inflammation in people. So for me, I don't want to just exist. There's 7.3 billion people on this planet. I just don't want to be a consumer. If I'm going to live and breathe air and drink the water and eat food and just be here on this planet walking around, I want to make a difference. I want to make something of my life. And that's what I've tried to live by. Come this way ever so slowly if you dare. When I see people walk away from here at the end of the programs, they're invigorated. They're given hope. And it's also a little bit tinged with a little sadness and a little bit of emotion, perhaps, because for some people it hits them a little harder. They see that life isn't quite as simple as maybe they see it here, and that there isn't these, these problems that we have don't really have easy answers. There's a complexity, but we bring hope to them. I think the future rests in one word, love. Love.